Coming up, a blockbuster movie needed a theme song badly. The scores of artists had tried or been approached. They'd rejected, I think, 50-something songs. Nothing was working. Today's artist came in just days before the song was due. He had nothing. And he had the challenge of fitting a very strange and long movie title into the chorus. Nothing rhyme with it. Well, one night at 3 a.m., he was watching TV half asleep when a pest control ad came on, and right there, the song's genesis came to him. The idea became one of the most recognizable songs ever and a huge number one hit. The artist tells a story coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Make sure to subscribe below right now to be a part of our Music History Daily, straight from the artists. You get the stories of the greatest songs and albums from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Also, check us out on Patreon. That helps us keep it a daily channel, and uh, you can become an honorary producer to help us produce this content. So with Halloween coming up, I wanted to share this fascinating interview of a song that's always played around this time of the year. 1984, the producers behind a new movie starring SNL alumni Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, along with Harold Ramis, was getting ready for release. But this movie, like any 80s movie, needed a big theme song. The powers of B behind the film, they wanted something monumental. They had an exact sound that they wanted, and they wanted the title of the movie in the chorus, and the title of the movie was Ghostbusters, and what rhymes with that? Who you gonna call? They wanted it fast as well. They'd already rejected 50 plus songs for the film and they'd approached many different artists. According to an article from Medium titled The Freaky Legacy of the Ghostbusters Theme Song, that came out in 2016, Huey Lewis was one of the artists approached for this. He allegedly turned it down. In the Medium article, it states, and I quote, In 1984, Huey Lewis famously sued Ray Parker Jr. suggesting that Ghostbusters ripped off his 1983 hit, I Want a New Drug. The two parties settled out of court and agreed to keep the details of the suit confidential. Also noted in the Medium article, which is really a fascinating read. Um, in fact, I'll link to it below. You got to check it out. Ghostbusters director, the late Ivan Reitman, admitted to Esquire in 2014, the scenes in the 1984 film were originally cut to Lewis's song. He said, and I quote, we kept looking for a song for the montage in the middle of the movie. I was a big Huey Lewis fan and I put in I Want a New Drug as a temp score for screenings. I do that a lot. And it seemed to be a perfect tempo and we cut the montage to that uh, tempo. I want a new drug. Want the bone make me sick? He also went on to say, when it was time to mix the movie, someone introduced me to Ray Parker Jr. and he comes back with a song called Ghostbusters that has basically the same kind of riff in it. But it was a totally original song, original lyrics, original everything, end of quote. In that same article from Medium, Ray Parker Jr. would say, and I quote, to me that was an impossible song to write. The first thing they said, I want it up tempo. I want this, I want that. And I said, oh, that's easy. I'm a musician, I can cut it. Then he says, I want the word Ghostbusters in it. And I'm like, how am I gonna sing Ghostbusters in a song? I'm ruined here, it's never gonna happen. To me, I had to almost make it into a, a commercial. And that's kind of what he did. Coming up next, Ray Parker Jr. gives us a fascinating story, the whole story, and an exclusive interview. We've shown parts of it before, but never the whole thing. Uh, how he solved the conundrum, and it came from a pest control ad. <laughs> really great story coming up. As we go into this interview, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. I wear them every day. Love them. They're lightweight. I own about 15 pairs, actually about 20 now. I love that you can have three pairs for the price of what you would pay for just one with other companies. Check it out today by clicking on our info button right here. Here's a story of Ghostbusters straight for the man. Well, 1984, I mean, how could you prepare for <laughs> the life-changing event that would be the Ghostbusters selling? Talk about number one pop sold in, yeah. in the US, France, Canada, Belgium, Africa, Top everywhere. five yeah, worldwide. Everywhere. Everywhere. And of course, being a fan of the movie, and, and when I first heard the song, I thought you were Lando Calrissian. <laughs> you know, when you're a little kid, you don't put in, oh, yeah. that's Billy D. Williams. Yeah, right, you yeah. don't think of the actor, you think yeah. of Lando Calrissian. I'm like, Lando Calrissian yeah. singing the Ghostbusters yeah, yeah, song. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. It works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're different ages, but they went back and got a picture of him, and we look just alike. You do. It's hard, it's hard to tell one from the other. But you're approached by the film producers 
to create the theme song. You only had a couple of days, as I yeah, remember. I got a phone call from Gerald Busby to see this band called The New Edition. Well, they wanted to record Mr. Telephone Man. So that was the first time I'd been in L.A. in a while. I was in Spago's eating, and there was a black poster, and they were just painting the red circle. The phone rings, and it's Gary the Mail saying, you got to help me on this film. You're the guy to do it. I know you can do it. And he was 100% sure that I could do it. Well, they had already had like 60 a songs. A lot of people. Yeah, they had a bunch of songs. And Gary says, man, we got a problem here. The director yeah. don't like anything. The movie's coming out in a few weeks. We need, I need this song. And he says, but I need the words Ghostbusters in, in the, the song. song. He gave me very specific. He says, I want saxophone line yep. in it. Because he wanted it to like sound like a bar band music. And if you think bar band, when I was in the bar... <laughs> Oh, yeah. So I know we're going to play those chords. Boom, 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 boom. That's bar band. That's what a bar band does. So, you know, I went to see the film and everything was gone. I met the director. He told me exactly what I was. I need a little saxophone, need some bar yeah. band, need some da, da, da. But it needs to be up tempo. You know, don't make it too slow because the movie's got action in it. It needs to get going. And I sat there like, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. And I said, I don't know what to do. And I thought, this would be simple. He wants a bar band thing. Then he throws the curve at the end of the meeting. But I want the words Ghostbusters in the songs, like Ghostbusters. And he said, yeah, Ghostbusters. You know, the, no, See, now you say Ghostbusters. That's because you heard the song. Uh, exactly. But before you heard the song, well, it was like Ghostbusters. Yeah. Think about that Ghost... for a minute. What rhymes with Ghostbusters? Nothing. Nothing. And yeah. I, wait a minute. Worse than that, you can't even sing. It sounds stupid. When you yeah. just, I love a Ghostbuster. I mean, there's no way you can say this word. No. And then it occurred to me, no wonder they got 60 songs and nobody's liked it over yeah. here. This is How a hell of a job. That? No wonder they're paying me. This is impossible, you know. But there's this part on the movie where the Ghostbusters had their backpacks and they got their things and they got the phone number underneath it. The 555 five, five number. Pick up your phone and call the professionals. Go Ghostbusters. So four in the morning, I'm sleepy. I got I, all the music's done. I got no words, none. And I'm and then the commercials come on TV. And I think it's a pesticide or rotor rooter commercial. I don't know what it's, but something like that. And the guys had their bug machines or whatever, this, this pesticide spray thing. And they had a phone number here. And they said, call this number if you want to get rid of so and so. I'm like, that looks like the ghost. That's it. Yeah. Call. I had no, no I know it's like the phone number. Forget the ghost, but it's the phone number. And I thought, well, I got to say, who are you going to call? And I said, if, if I do that, what that allows me to do is never say the word Ghostbusters. And then I'm going to have a crowd answer Ghostbusters. It's who you call. And I said, because it's a crowd, they're not really in the record. They're not musical. So that takes away the word Ghostbusters. That gets it out of the song. Exactly. So we can have a song. And I can sing Who You Gonna Call. Who You Gonna Call? Ghostbusters! And the magic that happened is you got me from Detroit with my sort of Detroit accent. Who You Gonna Call? I'm doing, I ain't afraid of them. And, but then you got these Valley girls oh, yeah. with this, that stiff, I mean, real, you know, El Los Angeles Valley. So it's like, East Coast meets West Coast, and they're like, you know, someplace else. And it just worked. It's just one of those well, things. Well, the call and response is brilliant because and that goes back to music forever. The call yeah. and response it goes back to jazz. It exactly. goes back to right? Exactly. The other thing that's brilliant about it is because you have people shouting it so immediately anybody is going to sing it. Right. Because you don't have to have a great voice. You don't, you don't have, have to have a great... You're involving everybody. And say, right. Who are you going to call? And then they're going to answer. respond to you. It's just so brilliant for a movie. The other yeah. thing, too, is that the three most memorable lines have become part of our everyday yeah. lingo as a human race. I mean, you think about who are you going to call? That's the I ain't first afraid one. no ghosts. Ghost and right? Bustin makes me and feel Bustin good. And makes me feel good. Yeah. So take us through it a little bit, if you don't mind, because I'd love to hear well, you play it. Well, first of all, we're going to go back to those, those same two chords. Yep. And by the way, people think it's a simple song, and yeah. most bar bands mess it up, because the magic's in the guitar part. Yeah. And the guitar doesn't play on a down, be like, it plays on two, rest. And then you got to have this rhythm. Yeah. So it lands on an interesting beat. Then the other part is actually triplet time. <laughs> so it's actually a little funkier than you would yeah. think. Yeah. 
Totally. But in order to play it right, the other thing I thought of is everything had to be military time. It had to be yeah. stiff. So the guitar is a little looser because it plays that rhythm, but everything else is it's very Gestapo, very military, yep. very, you know, that's why, you know, I remember I used to watch Gomer Powell. Sergeant Carter, sir! I can't hear you! So at the end, I got calm sound off. I can't hear you. Maybe you yeah, saw yeah, yeah. Gomer. So it's that march. Everything is marching. I can't hear you. Well, there's so many different melodies to it, too. Yeah. Because even when you the the ding, 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 here yeah. it exactly. goes, yeah. you know, exactly. dun, 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 with the saxophone yeah. coming in. And that's in. Charles singing that part. Yeah. I hear yeah. it likes the girls. So yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, everybody. It's one of those things. We, we couldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Put the instruments up as fast as I could. And I used whatever sound was sitting in front of me. Well, it's also when you hear the beginning of the song and you hear that. That's all an intro or synth, yeah. of course. See, that sounds like something I heard as a kid. I just remember that meant spooky. So I said, I'm always do that. If I get a chance, I'm going to do that. And then I put the drums on. I mean, it was just, it was, it was one of those moments in history. You, you it just, all came together. You couldn't mess you can't, up. You can't even really. Couldn't mess up. I had a sequence. Describe it. Jupiter you know? 6. I had the drum machine and everything I played. That's what we kept. We didn't spend yeah. any time getting the sounds up. Just plug in. Let's go. What, what's the first sound? Okay, that's it. Well, it has such <laughs> such a likable, fun yeah. lyrics too. Like when you say yeah. an invisible man sleeping in, in your bed. bed. Yeah, and right, then, yeah, and then you right. come out underneath the bed with the video. Now, who are you going to call? Ow! An invisible man sleeping in your bed. Ow! Who are you going to call? I mean, was that something that you were just in the studio and you're just kind of having fun, it sounds like? Uh, it's worse than that. The <laughs> messenger was coming at nine o'clock. The girls left at eight o'clock because they, they had class at eight o'clock. The girls and a couple of guys. Yeah. So between eight and nine o'clock, I'm panicking because I got no words. I just got who you gonna call and the kids singing Ghostbusters. I don't Gosh. have no verses. I ain't got none of that. So, uh, and I didn't need all of it, by the way, at that time. I just needed the first verse, right? And so I put the first verse on with the messenger in the door. We locked him out. Right, so we didn't let him in. Just told him you got to wait outside. And I took a microphone with the speakers playing, no headphones. I just started singing and made up some words, and just that was it. And it's got those classic Ray yeah. Parker nuances. That's yeah. why it must have felt pretty good to know that. I mean, and this is this is the truth. I don't yeah. think there's anybody in the universe that could have written that song the way it was written, except for you. You just well, thank you. It came yeah. together. Yeah. The nuances. The bridge, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. And then, everything uh, means two yeah, or three yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, so yeah. you. Yeah. I love the vocal too. Great vocal is if you had a dose of freaky ghost, baby. If you've had you a dose call. of a freaky ghost, baby. If you have a dose of a freaky ghost, baby. Busta makes me feel good. That's How the did one. that come? That's the one. I don't know where that came from, but it's Let like. Let me tell you ghost. something. Yeah, yeah, tell you something. <laughs> Busta makes me feel good. That's after everything you've done. Guess what? And it's not just that. After everything you've done, let me tell you something. Busting makes, <laughs> makes me you feel, feel good. good. Yeah, right. Then don't get it. caught alone. No, no. Yeah. Don't get caught alone. No, yeah. no. When it comes then, through your dough, unless you just want some yeah. more. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think well, Martin Page. Well, those and guys are wonderful. Martin and Brian. The guys from Q-Field. So he said, come in on play, and play on this track. And all we heard was like, who are you going to call? Who are you going to call me? Though? This isn't very good. <laughs> this is, first thing we're on sounds crap. And then, uh, you know, but within two weeks, it was number one. And we played on the track. And Ray was, uh, you know, one instrumental in, uh, in helping yeah. us get through the door. And they came up with some of those great little parts and stuff. Well, and of course, uh, Martin Page, a couple of years later, wrote a couple of number one hits exactly. himself with That's Bernie right. Taupin. Yeah. So. I want to ask you about On Her Own. I remember going out and buying the cassette single and just loving that song. That's, I think, one of your best songs, if not the best. I just so much wow. energy in that. That's Number the song I open up with, so. Yeah. 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 Because it has that, that oomph yeah. to it. It was made for you. Yeah. When you do your, your high pitch, oh, you know, <laughs> too hot to handle, too cold to hold. Yeah. You know? Too hot to handle, too cold to hold. They call it those buses. Your cameo. Tell My me cameo. About your cameo. Oh, man. It was, it was so much fun to shoot. Um, 
I, I hadn't laughed so much on a set of uh, of anything. Bill Murray is, is is probably one of the funniest people in the world oh, without man. even trying to be funny. <laughs> he's like the he's he, he's so serious about everything. And I don't know if he knows he's being funny, but <laughs> I, I was laughing the whole time I was on that set. And um, it was just fun to, you know, be a part of something that was, you know, that iconic. And, so iconic. Yeah. yeah. You know, Ghostbusters will always be remembered. Your line in that is so classic, man. You got another one of those proton packs? packs. Hey, you guys got another one of those proton packs? My kid brother really wants one. The proton pack is not a toy. I probably wouldn't even mean to do this because it was just a, a movie song, but the way that you said it, you, you got to learn to take control. Yeah. In my life at that moment, like, that inspired me, man. That line, my prerogative to that song mm -hmm. did that for so many people because you really spoke. Yeah. So many well, it did it, it. It actually did it for me, you know. And to be able to, I have a seven-year-old son, and for him to be able to to see all of that, see it now, and 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 watch Ghostbusters now, and and be like, Daddy, that's my daddy. And and for him to go to school and his classmates are, you know, amused that you know that he's my son and that yeah. I'm Bobby Brown. Well, the video, I mean, it's so classic because of the neon, mm -hmm. perfect for the 80s with the neon lights and you had yeah. the neon microphone and you're perfect well, for let, the let video. Let me tell you about the video. That yeah. was it. We didn't, we were panic stricken when Ivan Reitman says, but it needs to be longer. And we, we said, maybe we should make a record. With record, I only cut like a minute and a half of it. And the Clive Davis was wondering, you're going to have a song where you sing about a ghost? I mean, what? <laughs> We've been working on your career for like years. You got the girls, the ladies love you. What are you doing singing to go with? And, you know, so I'm thinking, well, how does this work now? Now we're all getting scared. <laughs> you're really getting scared. Yeah. I mean, wow. like everybody laughs not because the biggest record in the world, but at the time we're like, well, maybe we shouldn't let it be a single. When that did it, they That's told me it's just going to be the library scene, you know. And I sort of came up with the idea. I said, well, you know, if it's, if you got Dan Aykroyd, if you, if you do the Saturday Night Live guys on it with me, maybe it'll just be a spoof like for Saturday Night Live and it won't be a serious video. Maybe they won't take it as serious. Then Ivan Reitman took that idea and just ran with it. He said, let's yeah. put everybody in a video. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, I guess that can work, you know? And so that's how the video. And you have all these the cameos. I can't yeah. even name them all. There's so many of them. And the shirts. I mean, I've got a picture of myself mm -hmm. when I'm eight years old. Holding two fish in my hand, right. the Ghostbusters ghost shirt. shirt yeah. And then there's a picture of my son. Yeah. He's eight years he's old. Eight years old. He's got a Ghostbuster <laughs> shirt on. I mean, it's just right. awesome. Yeah. The most amazing thing is that the kids know what it is. Oh, yeah. I meet a kid five years, six years Doesn't old. Doesn't matter what it is. They, yeah, they hear it, it on is. The TV, they know the song, they know the thing, and they start smiling, you know. Tell us about jamming with the Ghostbusters at the end, Bill Murray and the rest of the guys. When you're teaching Bill Murray how to break How much? I never man. met the guys till that moment. Wow. And uh, Bill Murray came up with the idea of break dancing, And then he said, hey, spin me around. So he's got me spinning him <laughs> around. It was just the craziest thing. Nominated for an Oscar, won a Grammy. And you know that was a Stevie Wonder. Stevie okay, Beach, yeah. Okay, just okay, come sail And I beat him in England. He yeah. got the Bafta Award. But, uh, you know, that's bittersweet. Had I won the Oscar, I don't think me and Stevie would have ever spoke again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I took Stevie Wonder's first Oscar I know. And, and I was his student and it was dead quiet sitting there. I'm sitting with Stevie Wonder. I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what to do here. If I win, I'm obviously going to thank him because he showed me how to write songs. And the winner is, I would wake up, but I never thought that this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> what an honor. I know. The guy who taught me how to write songs, who I think is the like, genius of the 20th century, I'm nominated for an Oscar against him. I know. And a Grammy against him. I mean, come on. If I had to list all of the movies or TV shows that have used that, we'd oh. be here all day. Yeah. It's been used in the cartoon series, the video games, Lego Dimension, mm -hmm. Stranger Things 2. Yeah. Every generation picks mm -hmm. up on it, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. for me, one of the best things about it is when my kids were growing up, I was their hero. I don't think it gets any better than that. Oh, yeah. Well, I got to tell you, the best part of the song is when I see five or 10-year-old kids and they're smiling happy. And everywhere I go, they're just so happy. And that's, to me, surpasses the fame, surpasses the money. It surpasses everything. Yeah. Because you look them in the face and they just give you that look like, Joy. I love you. I mean, it's just, it doesn't get any better. They just love you, you know. 
Unless you just want some more I think you better call Ghostbusters! Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave us a comment about the Ghostbusters song. What are your memories of the movie and the music? Man, 1984, I still think greatest year ever in pop culture. Not just music, but pop culture overall. What do you think? Tell me below. Let's have a great discussion, great memories. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.